Hello, my name is Josh Burks, Economic Advisor for the City of Fort Collins. I work in the uh, Economic Health Office, which is part of the Finance Department. Uh, I want to share with you today a few of the economic strategy choices uh, that we're asking for community feedback uh, in the Plan for Collins process. I'm going to talk about uh, five choices today. First, I think it's important to provide a little bit of context. About five years ago, the city undertook a conversation uh, with the community as to what it should do and how it should go about um, maintaining and focusing on the economic health of the community. Prior to that conversation, the real efforts around economic development and the economic health of the community had been on providing a high quality community with good amenities. That remains a very important and valuable part of the economic strategy. But in that conversation that occurred five years ago, additional strategies were added um, that take a more proactive role in evaluating and maintaining the stability of our economy. Those four key strategies include uh, an emphasis on job creation through business retention, expansion, incubation, and finally attraction. And it's important to note that the order of those uh, words in that list is important. Those are the priority as direction was given from City Council to the Economic Health Office uh, that we should place on those particular efforts. First, we should retain businesses uh, that are already in our community. Second, we should help them expand. Third, we should try to incubate additional businesses uh, from within, from various economic drivers like Colorado State University and our private industry. And then last, we should look at trying to attract businesses from outside our community to our community. Also, we need to be more proactive about our economic issues. To the Economic Health Office, that means two things. First, we need to be educated about what's going on in the economy and what trends and forces are at work and how they might impact our own community's economy. And second, then reacting to those trends through important and thoughtful policy adjustments and, uh, and strategies and tactics. One of the other strategies that was implemented during that conversation was that we need to be building partnerships. And those partnerships need to be built with the major economic drivers of our community, which include Colorado State University, private industry, such as Hewlett Packard or Woodward, and, and then other partners in the larger county, such as Larimer County Workforce Center and the Northern Colorado Economic Development Commission. And all of those strategies really lead to the ultimate goal, which is to try to diversify our economy and make it less dependent on a particular industry and therefore insulated from uh, swings within that industry's own economic success. We've done that in a variety of ways, not the least of which was uh, determining what the targeted industries within our community are that we should be focusing our efforts on. Uh, that uh, process also uh, was underway, went underway shortly after um, the formation of an economic health office and the economic health strategy. And today we have five targeted industries, including uh, chip design, software, clean energy, uh, uniquely for Collins, and uh, bioscience. So what we're talking about today and what I want to give you some information about is the, econo the economic strategy choices that are part of the Plan for Collins process. As you probably know, Plan for Collins is an update to City Plan and the Streets Master Plan, or basically our overall strategy for how the community will continue to uh, develop over the course of the next 25 years. I want to talk about five key choices that affect our ability to, um, to stabilize and influence our economic health within the community. The first of which is job creation. And for a little bit of context, it's important to note that in the last decade, really since 2000, uh, the employment within the city of Fort Collins has grown. It's grown by approximately 8,000 jobs, or 1.1 percent. That's the net increase, meaning that in 2000 we had X jobs and today we have 8,000 more than that. However, it's important to note that in the most recent years, in most recent past, we've lost nearly 4,000 jobs in the last few years. And that was from a peak of employment in 2008. Uh, obviously, there's hard economic times in the nation, and there are also hard economic times here at home in the city of Fort Collins. As a result, we have about a 7.4 percent unemployment rate. It's important to note that that unemployment rate, though, is lower than the county, the state, and the national average, and has been uh, pretty consistently throughout this most recent economic downturn, which means that we at the city of Fort Collins do have a diverse economy that has fared better than others. Last, I want to make sure that it's understood that the city cannot create private sector jobs. In fact, all we can really do is catalyze the creation of jobs by facilitating employment, attraction, 
and business retention, expansion, and incubation, as I talked about previously. And that there are many strategies and tactics that we already employ to do that. However, what we're talking about today are some uh, opportunity for choices on how we might continue uh, along that vein and really expand our capability in this area. Some possible approaches or tactics, you might say, on how we could continue to maximize our job creation efforts include understanding our community better through the development of a Fort Collins Community Index. This would basically be evaluating the metrics that give us information on our economy and understanding how we perform against ourselves historically as well as others. Another approach would be to support the expansion of key economic drivers such as the Colorado State University Energy and Engines Conversion Lab. And there may be other drivers that come up over time and taking a proactive role in supporting those um, is one particular, uh, particular approach. Understanding how we compete compared to other communities, both here in our region, in the state, and nationally is also important. Understanding what we're up against can be a very important part of understanding what we need to do in order to encourage businesses to stay here, expand here, and then potentially even come here from other locations. All of that could be translated into a sustained marketing strategy as another approach which really tells our story and lets people know what it is uh, we think we have to offer and how we stack up. And last, another approach would be to facilitate the availability of land uh, with the characteristics that meet the needs of employers, whether they're here or coming uh, in from outside. So in essence, that's what we mean when we say we're one particular strategy or, or choice is to maximize business retention. Another choice that the community faces is what's its appropriate role in terms of the retention and recruitment of retail. Retail sales tax dollars are a very significant and important part of our general fund. They account in the state of Colorado for most municipalities between 60 and 70 percent of the general fund revenue. Historically, the city of Fort Collins enjoyed what we call sales inflow, which is where non-residents of the city of Fort Collins spend dollars on retail goods within our community. In our heyday, we estimate that between 40 and 50 cents of every dollar came from a non-resident. That meant that a lot of our key services like police, fire, recreation, and others were in part paid for by non-residents that didn't really put a demand on those services. Today, that number has dropped to about 25 cents on the dollar. At the same time, in our heyday, the money that we as residents earn that we spend on retail goods outside of our community used to be about 5 cents on the dollar. Today, that's risen to more like 16 cents on a dollar through the rise of the internet and its influence, as well as the, um, the lack of certain types of consumer goods within our community and purchases that individuals make on vacation and such. Obviously, these two metrics, inflow and outflow, have a significant impact on our tax collections and then our ability to provide services. So this approach really focuses on trying to make sure that we have the right goods here at home as well as opportunity for retailers and consumers or residents to spend their money locally. One potential approach is to redevelop the mall and make sure it's got the right retail mix. Another approach is to continue that redevelopment in one of our core retail areas, which is basically the area that we call Midtown between Prospect and Harmony along College Avenue which we've just completed a major study on, as well as just understanding our competitive position in terms of inflow and outflow on an ongoing basis. There may be other approaches that could help us retain and recruit retailers, and we'd welcome you to provide those uh, thoughts as well. The third choice I'd like to talk about is a very proactive approach in which the city would take the position of trying to facilitate the availability of land that is ready for new business such that it can react in a very quick time frame to the demands of the market, whether they be businesses internal to our community needing to expand and needing new land and new opportunities to do that, or businesses coming from outside our community that need a place to call home. There's a variety of approaches, again, uh, that could affect this choice, not the least of which is just understanding what land we have available and how it markets and how it compares to other land in the region. Another approach would be to take our limited resources that we receive for infrastructure and prioritize that infrastructure that supports employment lands that could be responsive to the, the needs of the market. Another key uh, impediment to development, in particularly in downtown, is the lack of parking. A lot of the historic buildings in the downtown area do not have their own parking. And as re redevelopment and infill occurs, we would be needing to look for strategic opportunities to add parking in the downtown area and meet that demand. Another approach is to make sure that we keep and preserve the land that we already have in uh, zone for employment uses so that we don't lose that scarce resource. 
So this particular choice actually has three separate choices. We wanted to provide some opportunity for a variety of responses that are tied to specific approaches. So you'll have the opportunity to give us feedback on three different choices in this particular category. The fourth policy choice that I want to talk with you about today is a more proactive and strategic and coordinated effort to encourage our residents to support local businesses. Purchasing local goods from a business that is owned locally and operated locally keeps sales tax dollars at home and keeps income at home, which can be very beneficial for our community. It's about creating an environment that enables entrepreneurs to compete with large corporations and franchise retailers and ultimately keeping uh, as much of the hard-earned money of our citizens here at home and benefiting our citizens. There's a variety of approaches under this particular choice as with the others. Mostly in this case it's supporting endeavors that are already underway such as the Be Local uh, nonprofit organization which really encourages people to buy local, shop local and support locally owned business. The other approach would be to support the development of the community marketplace which the Downtown Development Authority is looking at the feasibility of. A community marketplace would be a year-round seven uh, day a week uh, space available for a farmers market, uh, locally produced fo food goods, or our locally produced goods to be um, sold. So when we mean support local businesses, we're talking about those approaches and those tactics and any others that you might have as well. The last policy choice I'd like to discuss today is the role of the city within training of our workforce. Our workforce is one of our key assets in terms of keeping our economy diverse and competing with our regional competitors as well as uh, in the nation. We have a strong workforce, but maintaining that workforce and the right skill sets is an ongoing effort. In the face of rising unemployment, uh, we need to ensure that the workforce has the right skills to match the needs of our existing businesses and future businesses. One possible approach is to continue our partnership with the Larimer County Workforce and expand that partnership to make sure that we are delivering the right kinds of workforce and the, and the right kinds of training to support this effort. That's a quick overview of the five key policy choices within the economic health uh, section of the Plan for Collins project. Uh, we welcome your input and there are a variety of ways of doing that. Uh, please visit our website at fcgov.com to find opportunities to provide input uh, both through email and uh, other forms of correspondence. Thank you for your time.